Special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Rusberg for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, here to here bringing you another Minecraft World War II back to build tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be going ahead and doing a resign for the Kajiro class destroyer. The Kajiro class destroyers were a class of 19 first class destroyers built for the Imperial Japanese Navy during the 1930s and operated by them during the Pacific War, when all but one were lost. The class was one of a series called the Destroyer Type A within the Imperial Japanese Navy from their plan name. At the time of introduction, these destroyers were among the deadliest destroyers afloat, primarily due to the excellent range and lethality of their long lance torpedoes. The Kajiro class here was probably one of the most numerous um, classes of destroyers built by the Japanese during World War II, and um, crazily enough, pretty much most of the ships, um, besides one, were lost in um, basically naval action. So pretty interesting uh, design for the ship, and Japanese really made some really cool looking destroyers, and Obviously, the Kajiro class was no exception to that. Before we go and jump into this build, though, I do want to go ahead and give a special thanks to Patreon support Derek Frost Westbrook for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel more you already do, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions where you can go and place a small amount to the channel every month, and in doing so, earn a view of request you're choosing. It really helps support the work I do on my channel. is really greatly appreciated, so again, definitely feel free to check that out. Again, link is in the video descriptions. With that, though, let's go ahead and dive in and take a look here at the Kajiro class destroyer. So jumping into it, we have the uh, forward uh, gun here. So it's a dual turreted um, gun. We then have the conning tower with obviously our bridge, um, some life rafts on the side. Again, as we progress further back, we have our main mass, um, along with our first kind of funnel here, some detailing around the side. We then have the torpedo launcher here, which houses the long lance torpedoes, which were a very effective torpedo for the Japanese Navy. Then we have our um, second funnel back here. Continuing back, just again, some more positions, some anti-aircraft guns, life rafts, all that. The second torpedo launcher, and then we have our rear mast here. And as we progress further back, we have our two rear mounted turrets. Um, so overall, a really cool looking ship and a really nice build will be a perfect addition to any of your Japanese fleets, as this ship was pretty much in service or seen throughout um, the World War II Pacific Theater. Uh, quite um, quite often so to definitely uh, can throw this into a lot of scenes and make it work for a lot of different maps or whatever you're making um, but without further ado let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer all right guys so going ahead and moving into our first layer here we will be going ahead and starting with layer one now for layer one here we're going to be going ahead and starting with by placing down a brick wall that is going to be positioned just like this and then we're gonna have a red stained glass pane that goes off the wall forward and then a red concrete block that goes back from it now at this point in time, you do want to make sure that you position this correctly in the water. So real quickly, just to go ahead and kind of show you guys the position of this, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves some um, blocks here, just kind of highlighted it. And this right here is where the water is going to sit. So the blue concrete there is representing your water level. And the red, obviously, here is our start of our hole. So just make sure that's positioned correctly if you are putting this in the water, which I imagine most of you guys will want to do. So again, just make sure that's all good to go. Anyways though, continuing on, we're going to go ahead and take our red concrete, we're going to go ahead and go back from this block. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. More red concrete blocks back, so this should be in total a row of 18. I'm going to go and double check our count here, and it is going to be 18 blocks in total. Then on the very end here, we're going to go ahead and place down a brick upside down stair, and then we're going to go and then place down a brick top slab going back from it. So a brick top slab, and then a acacia wood trap door, a red stained glass pane, and then a brick wall, like so. After that is all done, we're going to go ahead and then grab our red stained glass panes. We're going to go to the side of the second from last block, so right here. And we're going to go and then go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 uh, forward. And again, we'll go ahead and double check our count here. So this in total should be a row of 15. And it is a row 15 in total. We're going to go do the same thing over here to this side. After that's complete, we're going to go ahead and take an acacia wood trapdoor. We're going to place it on both sides of this red concrete block up here in the front. And then going toward the rear, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves lightning rods. We're going to place down two lightning rods, like so, coming off these red stained glass panes. And then we're going to place down an acacia wood fence gate, like so. Open it toward that top slab. Same thing over here. 
And then coming off those, we're going to go ahead and place down skeleton skulls. Now, just a side note that skeleton skulls cannot be placed in the water. So if that's the case, you can go ahead and very simply either use some uh, birchwood slabs or some sort of alternative to make your props. But again, not a major detail, especially if it's in the water, you're not going to really see it. Um, after that's done, though, we want to go ahead and then grab ourselves some acacia wood signs. We're going to go ahead and go to the third um, glass pane here from the back. And then we want to go ahead and go to the one, two, three, four, five, six, and your seventh uh, glass pane back from the front. We're going to place an acacia wood sign on those two blocks. And then we just want to go and connect our lines together with a row of signs like that. And over here, we're just going to go do the same thing. So just like this. After that's all done, that right there is going to basically complete everything we have there for layer one. Here is a overview again of what this layer should look like from the top down view. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, layer number two. Moving into our next layer here, we have layer number two. For layer two to start with, we're going to place down an anisite wall on top of this red stained glass pane here. And we're going to go then take our stone blocks. We're going to go back one, two, three, and four stone blocks back. We then want to go ahead and grab our strip spruce wood. We're going to place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 of those blocks back. We're going to go and switch back to our stone and we're going to place down 1, 2, and 3 stone blocks back. After that, that's it for our center line and we're going to go and start working our way out to the sides now. We're going to place down an item frame on the side of this first stone block. We're going to place down a crossbow in the item frame and rotate it so it faces downwards. Same thing will be done over here on this side as well. Once we have that all done, we're gonna go ahead and then go back to our glass panes here. We're gonna, or to our last two stone blocks, we're gonna place down two light gray stainless panes on the side of those two blocks. We're gonna take our anisite walls, we're gonna go back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen, and then two more light gray stainless panes. Same thing will be done over here on this side as well. So just like this, we're gonna all side. And then our two glass panes. After we have that all done there, um, that right there is going to basically complete what we have for this layer. So pretty simple, straightforward layer. And again, here is an aerial view of what it should look like from the top down view. With that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, which will be layer number three. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number three. For layer three to begin with, we're gonna place down an anisite wall on top of this wall here. And then we're gonna go and then surround these three sides here with birchwood signs. So it's gonna look like that. We then want to go ahead and place down a polished deep slate slab, like so. And then continuing on, we're going to place down a birchwood fence gate. We're going to open this toward the rear of the ship. And then after that fence gate, we want to go ahead and place down a dispenser, like so. After you have that done, we're going to go ahead and grab some skeleton skulls. And we're going to place down skeleton skulls on the side of these two blocks. And same thing over here. And then we're also going to place down skeleton skulls on top of these two glass panes. So right here as well, to both sides. We're going to go ahead and place down a spruce wood slab here in the center, and a stone block, then an anisite wall. We then want to go ahead and grab a white bed, and we're going to place it down on both sides here, on top of those white, or on top of those anisite walls. After we have that complete, we're going to go ahead and place down a end rod on top of this block here, and we're going to go ahead and then continue on by placing down a stone stair here, and then a stone full block. On both sides of the stone stair, we're going to go ahead and place down a stone brick top slab. And we then want to go ahead and grab ourselves a grindstone and we're going to place down a grindstone come off both sides of this stone full block here. We're going to go ahead and then place down our polished deep slate slab here. And then we're going to place down our uh, a piston right here. If you do have access to a debug stick, so if you are not on Java or Pocket Edition, I would or if, sorry if you're not on Java, um, so you're on Bedrock or Pocket Edition, um, instead of the piston here, a good alternative would be to either place down a polished deep slate stair or full block. I'll leave that up to you guys, but the piston here will be modified a little bit later to kind of create a cool design. So that is what we're using the piston for, so just keep that in mind as we progress further. Um, we're going to go ahead then place down a stone stair like so, and then we want to go ahead and then place down a stone full block. After that, we're going to go ahead and then place down a birchwood fence gate to both sides here of this stone stair. So it's going to look just like that. After that is all done, we want to go ahead and then grab our white bed. We're going to place down a white bed here to both sides. And we're going to go then place down a stone block here. We then want to place down a deep polished deep slate slab like that, a piston, or again an alternative to the piston that you placed previously up here. After that, we're going to go then place down a row of stone blocks. So one, two, three. To the side of the first stone block, we're going to place down a stone brick slab. Then we want to go ahead and place down a grindstone. 
and then a light gray stainless paint. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and place down another piston right here, followed by a birchwood fence gate, which we're going to open up toward the piston. To the sides here we're of the fence gate, we're going to place down flower pots. And also in the front here as well, on both sides of this end rod, we're going to place down flower pots here on both sides. Then on the very back here, we're going to go ahead and place down a uh, redstone repeater. Like this, we're going to spread the notches apart from each other like so. And we want to go ahead and place down a gray carpet on top of this stone block. And then a end rod like so on top of this very last stone block here in the back. Now the next uh, kind of few bits here are going to be mainly for Java players only. Um, and what we want to do here is um, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves a debug stick. So we're going to type in the command slash give at p minecraft colon debug underscore stick. So this will be your command here. You'll press enter and you'll get this debug stick. What we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and go to these two pistons. So for our torpedo launchers and we're just going to go ahead and left click them until we get selected extended false prompt pop up. And we're going to go ahead and then right click those and it will get rid of that wood portion on top and kind of creates these nicer um, looks there for our torpedo launchers. So that's kind of the first thing there. The next thing is going to be the glass panes here. We can actually go ahead and modify these glass panes and actually extend them in the direction here of these grindstones. To do that, pretty simple. We're going to go ahead and look in the direction we're facing this. We're going to press F3. We're going to see here in that second paragraph we're facing toward the south. So again, it may be different for you and your orientation of the ship, but for me it's going to be to the south. Whatever your direction is, we're going to go ahead and left click the glass pane until we get selected um, the direction. And it should say false. We're going to go ahead and right click it and extend it toward those grindstones. So this kind of helps clean up this area a little bit better. And then uh, lastly, there's this thing on the back here which you can add. Um, this is going to be done by placing down a block on top of that glass pane. And then we're going to place down a lever on the side of this block. We're going to left click the uh, lever until we get selected face. We'll right click it, set it to the floor, left click again, and we're going to go ahead and get to selected facing. And we're going to just right click it and rotate it out to the side there. And lastly, all we're going to do here is we're going to place down a block kind of diagonal here from this lever and an end rod going forward. So it's going to look like that there. And this nice little thing that extends off the side. So nothing too crazy, but that's what we have set up right there. Um, so that right there is going to conclude everything we have there for layer three. And we'll be moving on to layer number four. Moving into our next layer, we have layer four. For layer four to start with, we're going to place down an end rod on top of this uh, block here. We then want to go ahead and go back to our stone block here. We're going to place down one stone block on top of that. We're going to then place down item frames around this block like so. We're going to place down a black bed here, rotate it sideways so the pillow faces toward the rear. And over here on this side, we're going to go and do the same thing, pillow toward the rear. Then a black concrete block here on this front item frame like that. If you're on Java, we're going to go ahead and also grab our birchwood signs. And we're just going to place them on the sides here of the block as well to help kind of hide the item frames. If you are not on Java, you will not be able to place down item frames and sign in the same block space. So you have to just place down the item frames and unfortunately disregard the um, sign. Um, with that though, continue on, we're going to place down a stone stair here, and then a skeleton skull to both sides of that stair, as well as an end rod on top of this one. We're going to go ahead and continue on by placing down a birchwood fence gate that is going to sit on top of this stone block, and we're going to open that toward the front there. We then want to place down a stone block on top of this one, as well as a andesite wall on top of this stone block here. We're going to place down a skeleton skull going forward from the block, and on both sides of this um, wall we're going to place down a birchwood sign. Continuing on, we're going to go ahead and place down a stone brick slab here on the back, an item frame, and then in that item frame we're going to place down a snowball, like so. Then on the very back here, on this middle stone block, we're going to place down a birchwood fence gate, open this toward the front, skeleton skull coming off the fence gate here. And then we want to place down another piston that's going to go right here with a birchwood fence gate coming off the piston and open up toward it for our rear turret. After we have that all done there, we're going to go ahead and grab our debug stick here. And we're going to go ahead and right click these two pistons here on the back to go ahead and finish those off. Now we're going to go ahead and also go to this midsection right here. And if you are on Java, we're going to place down item frames on top of those fence gates. If you're not on Java, unfortunately, I don't think you can place down item frames on top of fence gates. If you can, cool, go ahead and do so. But if you can't, then just go ahead and place down an iron trap door, um, something similar, a carpet or something. Um, but on Java here, we can actually go ahead and add some guns on to this um, section, which is kind of cool. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to kind of build a block that kind of goes off the item frames like that out to the sides. We're going to place down a lever on the side of the block here. And we're going to go and then use our debug stick, left click it. So very similar to what we did before on the back. We're going to go and left click it till we get the face. We want to set this to the floor. 
And we want to make sure that those levers are facing out toward the sides there for those um, kind of center mounted heavy um, anti-aircraft gun batteries. Uh, but yeah, that right there is basically it for this layer, and that is going to conclude everything there is for layer 4. With that, we're probably just going to go ahead and move into our final layers and finish off the rest of the build. Alright guys, so moving into our final layers here, we will be going ahead and moving into layer 6 for 9. For these layers to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to go to our little conning tower here in the front. We're going to place down a flower pot on top of that, and then a piston here on the very top. On the sides of the piston, uh, we'll go ahead and place down a trip bar hook. So let me go ahead and grab those real quick. So the trip bar hook on both sides here of the piston. Again, the piston here can be replaced with either like a stone brick full block or something of that equivalent, some kind of stone block. Um, can be replaced here as a replacement, as long as you can place down a um, trip bar hook on both sides. We're gonna go ahead and place down an end rod up like so, and then we wanna go ahead and then place down a skeleton skull coming off this end rod like that. On the very top here, we're gonna place down our birchwood fence gate. This fence gate here, we're gonna open up toward the rear of the ship. And then on the very top here, we're gonna place down an andesite wall. So like that, and then a end rod on top of that andesite wall, and then an end rod to both sides of that wall like that. After we have that done, we're going to go ahead and kind of do our front rigging here. To do this, we will need to go ahead and grab a barrier block. So we'll type in the command slash give at p minecraft colon barrier. So this, this command right here, and by pressing enter, you'll get this barrier block. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna place down one and two blocks coming off this um, this uh, wall here. We're gonna go and then drop down to one, and then we want to go and drop down again. We're gonna place down one and two, and then we're gonna place down one here coming off the end rod. We'll then go ahead and grab ourselves some stone buttons. We're gonna place down a stone button here, then one on both sides of this block, one on top of this block, one on both sides of this one, and then one on both sides of this one here, and then one on the very top of that one. So it's gonna look like that there for your front cabling. And we're gonna go ahead and continue on also by placing down a barrier block here, here, and here. And we're just gonna go ahead and place down our buttons on both sides of those blocks. So it's gonna kind of be this secondary line that kind of goes down and connects up to this forward turret. So like that there for our front rigging. At this point in time, we can also go ahead and take our debug stick and for Java players, we'll just go ahead and right click this piston to go ahead and set it like so. After that though, we're gonna go ahead and take our barrier blocks. We're gonna place down a row of three. That's gonna come down from that end rod there. We wanna go ahead and place down button here, button here, and then two wrapped around there like so for again, some additional cabling. And same thing will be done over here on this side as well. So just like that. After that is done there, we're going to go ahead and then move to our funnels. Our funnels here, simple enough. We're going to place down a polished black stone slab on top of this one, and then a wither skeleton skull on top of this one. So really easy. And then we have our rear mast. Again, really simple stuff. We're going to place down a birchwood fence gate on top of this fence gate here, and we're going to go ahead and open it toward the front. We're going to place down an end rod on top of it, and then an end rod to both sides, like so. We'll grab our barrier blocks, and we're going to go ahead and just place down a row of one, two, three going forward. Then we're going to go up for a row of four. One, two, three, four. Up again, and we're going to do a row of three. So it's going to be just like that. After that's done, we're going to go ahead and then place down stone buns on the side here of these three blocks. Then on the side of these four blocks, again on both sides. And then up on the very last row up here, on both sides of this row of three. After that, we're going to go ahead and place down a barrier block on both sides of this wither skeleton skull. On this one toward the rear, we're going to place down a button on both sides. This one forward of it, we're going to place down a button on both sides as well. Then we want to go ahead and go up from this barrier block here. One more block up, and then one block or one button there on the side there to form an angle. So again, some more rigging connected up to that rear funnel. Then lastly, on the very back here, we're just going to go ahead and take our barrier blocks. We're going to go off this end rod, one and two blocks. We're going to drop down another two blocks. And then we want to go ahead and then drop down to one block. So like this. We're going to place down a button on both sides of this rear block. Then we're going to place it down on the bottom of this block. Both sides of this one. And then again, the bottom. And then both sides of this block here. So it's like that, and it will connect up to that back end rod. And once you have that all complete there, that is going to wrap up my design here for the Kajiro class of Japanese destroyers. Hopefully you guys do enjoy this build and are able to put it to good use. If you do enjoy this build, I do ask that you guys give me proper credit for it. This is me thinking from a sound of the build, tweet to my channel, 
for this video if this is a pretty useful to me sites as long as you guys give me proper credit for it you're free to for projects you guys are working on overall enjoy the build have fun and all that fun stuff again a big special thanks to patreon support Derek frost westbrook for making this tutorial possible and as always feel free to check my patreon page link is always in my video descriptions and uh, with that, again, hope you guys do enjoy the build. Thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary 2x4, and I'll see you guys next time.